Welcome back to the Weather Center, everybody. Happy Wednesday, June 18th, 2025. I'm here to bring you the latest on very soon to be Major Hurricane Eric. If you saw my YouTube short I uploaded yesterday afternoon, our worst fears have been confirmed. Eric has taken advantage of an optimized environment and has hit that rapid intensification phase and is firing on all cylinders and continuing to do so. So we're going to focus on Eric. That is the priority today. There aren't any other pressing factors out there in the tropics that are really worth bringing to your attention right now. Obviously, if things change, I'll go ahead and make mention of that. But for now, thank you so much for taking some time out of your Wednesday evening to join me here in the Weather Center. Please, if you're brand new to the channel or have been looking in and out of these videos on a recurring basis, it would mean a lot to me if you hit that subscribe button, give that like button a little nudge. I need more nudges than usual today, as a matter of fact, because we have imminent information that needs to be out there amongst the interwebs as quickly as we can. So let's all work together on this one. Share this information for those you believe would benefit from it. And please drop me a comment down below if you're tuning in from an area that could possibly be in immediate harm's way thanks to Hurricane Eric, or you just want to say hello. Let me know where you're watching from regardless so we can strike up that conversation. I'd love to hear the weather in your neck of the woods, or just simply say hi. But with that, all that being said, let's go ahead and get in here. Let me go full screen. This is Hurricane Eric. Latest advisory has us at 110 sustained winds in the center, and the central pressure has deepened very, very quickly. When we say this storm hit rapid intensification, we are not pulling any punches. We are down to 967 millibars, still moving at about 9 miles an hour off towards the northwest. A very quality speed for this thing to continue to exploit the warm waters and great upper-level atmosphere that it found itself perched under a couple days ago when it first spun up. We were worried and I was very concerned yesterday when I put out that YouTube short that this thing definitely had a ceiling of major hurricane status and we're right on the cusp of seeing that and I would not be surprised if the next advisory we get puts it into category three major hurricane status. This is what we've got out there right now in terms of a center of circulation. You can see the wind field continues to expand, and it's growing in size in terms of tropical storm level winds. The core itself has been so tight and compact, extremely wound up, just like we saw with Milton, with Charlie back in 2004, with Andrew. This is a textbook buzzsaw type hurricane and that's precisely why it's managed to spin up and increase in strength the way that it has, but it's running out of time. Hopefully, as it gets closer to land, the frictional forces of the very rough terrain of southern Mexico is going to work in our favor. I have the hurricane models pulled up, at least the one that's initializing best, to show you what it looks like within its last 6 to 12 hours over water. But National Hurricane Center is now sold. This is going to be a fairly high-end Category 3 hurricane as it approaches landfall. You can see within 12 hours, right before it makes landfall, we're thinking winds of 125 miles an hour in the center gusts approaching category five intensity gusts anywhere between 150 to 160 in that core of eye wall winds. Here's a look at the rainfall forecast. The main reason I have this pulled up is so you can see just how fast it's going to wash out and really begin to lose that low and then mid-level circulation as it makes its way on shore. Notice that you have your heaviest rainfall loaded up right up against the coast. It's not that the storm is going to stop or slow down. It's just because the terrain in southern Mexico is very rough. It's like sandpaper to the low levels of these tropical cyclones. It's literally going to be wiped out from the bottom up and it'll rain itself out rapidly weakened just as fast as it spun up but regardless it looks like we are going to see quite an abundance of rainfall in a very very short period of time so flash flooding dare i say the classic phrase life-threatening flooding is going to be an issue alongside those sustained major hurricane conditions let me get you over to the satellite because, man, this is an impressive storm. Look at this thing. You can see throughout the loop the hot towers and the cumulonimbus, the CB towers right around that core of the storm really maximized overnight. We had some very, very... Really, we had some very high tops in the thunderstorm towers that were closest to the center that helped it to deepen even faster. You can see it's a very symmetrical system. It's right in that perfect setup to where there is no dry air or wind shear, despite a little bit of possible downsloping that's been happening along the coastline of Mexico, bringing in that warm, drier air to the south side of this system for the inflow to kind of try to feed into. It looks like towards the end there, I'll change the ink so you all can see. It looks like right there, that didn't quite do it. Let me go back 
back to my pink right there at the end of the loop there it could be another small dry air channel trying to get in there but if you notice the eye the eye wall is so walled off i don't really think this is going to weaken it may sustain itself hopefully it doesn't continue to deepen at such a hectic pace you come over to windy.com and you can see we have a perfectly symmetrical system there did not mean to zoom in that far apologize for that but notice how tightly wrapped up this system is the strongest winds are very very entrained right around that immediate its center and the core eye wall. Here's once again a look at the satellite on windy.com, a very impressive storm. You also have thunderstorms already firing up over Mexico over the rough terrain, likely orographically induced through that mechanical lift component being provided by not only this hurricane, but just the natural instability found in this region. The Eastern Pacific has taken full advantage of the MJO passage, really helping to stir the pot. The monsoonal trough out there has been really well organized and put together, allowing for these tropical cyclones to spin up. And the Atlantic has been bullying over pieces of tropical spin, tropical vorticity right up across this area. So it looks like we are probably going to get our F and possibly G named storms before this bout of very intense activity gets finished up. Going to switch you on over now to the HAFS model. This is the 18Z. The HAFS model A is the only one I'm going to bring up because all the other models are not initializing where they need to be. They're initializing a little too weak. You look at the first panel of the model loop here and it's right at around the central pressure of what we're observing right now, 965. And if you notice, this model doesn't quite deepen it much further as it gets closer to the coastline. In fact, it really hones in on how tightly wound this system is. That is a tiny hurricane, but regardless, it is a very dangerous one, and this will be making landfall into the very early morning hours of tomorrow, and it looks like by 8 a.m. our time, about 5 to 6 a.m. Central time and Western time, Pacific time, I should say, not Western, that's when we're looking at landfall of a potentially major hurricane, if not flirting with trying to weaken in some as the frictional effects and the turbulent conditions of it running into the coastline and the higher elevation features out there begin to take its toll. It's also going to be closer to the coastline, so any downsloping perpendicular winds hitting the mountains and then coming down into the lower elevations down to the sea surface are going to get pulled into this storm, so perhaps that dry air may also try to do a bit of damage to the system. You switch over to the relative humidity. It doesn't quite show up here, but if I go back in time, you'll notice that there is some dry air still being pulled in right here. It doesn't look like much, I promise. It's not going to be much because this is only mechanically influenced by the mountainous terrain out there. It's not going to do very much to this system, but you never know. There were some dry air channels that had previously shown up. You can kind of see a little batch of it right there, a disruption in the low and mid-level circulations, but then once it hit that rapid intensification phase, there was no no stopping it. So I'll take you back one last time to the infrared and you can take a look here. I'll pause the loop at the very end and you'll see some of that dry air trying to do its thing. And it looks like the hurricane models once again are going to get a big win from this. Notice that where your thunderstorms are particularly collected, you're really starting to shrink down. We have a lot of very good upper level outflow and very, very good cirrus dense overcast extending out of the system provided by that exhaust mechanism over top of it. But in regards to where your heaviest thunderstorms, your strongest winds, and the core of the feature is, it's very small. In fact, you can encapsulate it into just a couple of these latin long boxes there and these are very tiny latin long boxes they're only a degree whether it be vertically or horizontally however you cut the grids down this is a tiny storm and unfortunately these tiny storms are the ones that tend to get you they can spin down very very quickly and the models tend to struggle with that because they are so small in size the gfs believe it or not even though it was spinning up those phantom hurricanes on our side of the spectrum for so many different weeks on end it nailed this system in terms of this ri phase the rapid and intensification phase and how quickly this thing was going to balloon up into a possible major hurricane. Does look like that dry air is going to try to do something. However, a new hot tower has blown up on the eastern side of the eye. We have a great eye feature altogether, a very pinhole-like eye reminiscent of Hurricane Milton last year. So this is definitely not a hurricane that is going to start to rapidly diminish anytime soon. At most, at most, when it comes to weakening or trying to dissipate this thing, we may just see it hold on to what oomph it picks up over the next three to six hours, and then it'll run ashore and completely die off. 
Now, in terms of the Atlantic, well, you know, we're still in a holding pattern. There are some very healthy tropical waves out there. I want to put that out there for you all to know. There are different features that I'm watching. It's not like the Atlantic is totally dead. If it were a totally dead environment, we would have no moisture out there. We would have no lift. We would have no tropical waves. But the wave train coming off of Africa is still fairly healthy, and they are moving westerly at a pretty decent pace. The problem is the closer you get to the Lesser Antilles and the Caribbean, thanks to all this outflow, I've been looking at that, all this outflow brought on by the Eastern Pacific and their tropical activity is creating a corridor of very unfavorable winds from about the Yucatan Peninsula all the way through to just beyond the eastern side of our Lesser Antilles Island chain. So as these waves move through the GFS, even the Euro, the Euro AI model, it's trying to do something out there. But this is something I had mentioned to you weeks before all this started to take place is if the Eastern Pacific remains active, we're going to shut ourselves down on this side. Thanks to the positive NAO out there, we've got that incredibly strong easterly gradient from the MDR into the Caribbean. And then you have outflow in the mid to upper levels, reinforcing that vertical wind shear component from the Eastern Pacific across Central America. And the rest is history. So until the Eastern Pacific starts to wind down, which I do foresee it doing so after another week or so, we're probably going to get another blip or two until things really go back into that suppressed phase, especially with the upwelling that's likely to occur from not only Eric, but previous storm systems. Then I do think we'll slowly but surely start to see that pot of water called the Atlantic Ocean start to simmer a little bit, and we might start to get a couple of features to watch. Another thing that may help to cap us off the Saharan dust has not been that bad for a large majority of June. During the first five to seven days of the month, we had that first plume that came through. And ever since then, if you look at the beginning of this loop, we have some out there over top the Greater Antilles, but not a whole lot across the basin altogether. It isn't until about the 23rd through the 26th where we get another fairly good plume. And notice how it accelerates once it hits those easterly trades and begins to feel the influence of our very dominant high pressure system out there. Going to be a couple of key time frames I'm watching for. We have a very weak Kelvin wave that's going to move through the pattern. This is your latest velocity anomaly from the European control member. Then we have a more strong Kelvin wave that's going to be propagating west to east along the equatorial tropics. That's going to reach our basin by the time we get ready to turn the calendar to July 1st. So perhaps by July 4th through about July 10th, we might have a little something to watch out for. And then you can see as we get closer to the real hurricane season again it's quiet out there i know i know this is actually more normal than it's been for a while i promise that's not just us trying to come up with an excuse that the season's dead first of all put it into perspective it's only june 18th okay we don't typically get any hurricanes for that matter in the atlantic until we're getting deeper into august so just because we've had some very aggressive seasons the last couple of years doesn't mean that's going to be the repetition we follow on a regular basis. The waters have come down some. We don't have precisely as many optimal lifting mechanisms out there. So again, like I've mentioned on other live streams and other social media posts, we just got to hang out a little bit. Let's give it a little time. Let's let it percolate some. But main reason I bring that up is if you look beyond middle portions of July into August, we start to see that trademark signature for the African monsoon to ramp up, the Indian Ocean monsoon or the Indian monsoon to start to get a little more aggressive, and that's what's really going to ignite our wave train. We've got two more days till the calendar start of summer, so we're naturally going to see the orbit around the Earth bring that ITCZ a little further towards the north. Our Bermuda high pressure should also retrograde back towards the upper latitudes of the Atlantic, and then we'll see. If things don't start to fire towards the back end of July, and I mean a consistent firing, I'm not talking about we're not going to have anything to track between now and end of July, but if things don't start to consistently look more like the hurricane season, then as we rock into August, we can start to discuss if we should bring the numbers down. I'm sure some of our organizations out there will start to do the same. But it's not like we don't have anything to track out there. There's definitely a few signals. There's definitely waves to watch. And it's just a matter of when the wind shear, both from the eastern Pacific, thanks to those rocking tropical cyclones out there, and our NAO begins to dwindle down some. We also have that extension of the PNA over the eastern United States that's not helping the Atlantic's case. So, you know, again, we're just kind of hanging out and waiting. 
But that's that, guys. Thank you so much for watching this afternoon, this evening. We'll talk to you again very soon. I'm probably going to be putting out another video on Friday once I'm done with my Navy shenanigans, my drill for the day. And stay safe out there. Atlantic is still quiet. Let's enjoy the quiet period while we can. It does seem like looking long range, things are going to eventually shape up. So let's enjoy this more bonafide hurricane season without the record setting or the bizarre systems to throw us for a curve. The Eastern Pacific, unfortunately, is dealing with that right now. So thank you all for being such a tremendous community. Drop me a comment down below if you've stuck with me to the end of this update, and I'll talk to you again very soon. But until next time, this is Weather Center Nazario, signing out.